we have been talking about Riemann tensor. Um, there's a special way to decompose a Riemann tensor and that is called Ricci decomposition. So given you have um, our Riemann tensor, it can be de uh, decomposed as this. Now I'm not sure if this sort of work existed during Einstein's time or it was done later um, but let's talk about that. So this is the decomposition um, where R is the Ricci t ten, uh, is the Riemann tensor and each of these part actually this depends on something called scalar curvature this depends on something called Ricci tensor and this is called the Weil tensor the mathematician Hermann Weil okay let's um, talk about these um, expressions first of all um, this is called Weil tensor <coughs> excuse me and this is uh, traceless has no trace and um, E mu nu alpha beta is explicitly given as 1 over n minus 2 G mu alpha s nu beta minus G mu beta s nu alpha plus g nu beta s mu alpha minus g nu alpha s mu beta. Now this s is actually written as s mu nu equals r mu nu minus 1 divided by n g mu nu r. And this is nothing called scalar curvature. But if we're really r going to scalar curvature, uh, we have to know what this r mu nu is. Well, r mu nu is called the Ricci tensor, which is given as r alpha mu alpha nu, which means it's obtained by contracting two indices of Riemann tensor itself. And then r is obtained as by contracting two indices of the Riemann tensor uh, of the Ricci tensor itself. Okay, now you can see there are some upper indices and lower indices. Well, we know that we can always lower and raise them by using the metric g l g mu nu or g mu nu. Because it's a tensor. So Ricci, this is actually a tensor, it's Ricci tensor, so you can always raise and lower indices. We already know Riemann is, a, this is a Riemann tensor, so you can use metric to raise and lower indices. Similarly for Ricci, which Ricci tensor, you can raise and lower indices, and then if you contract it over indices, you get Ricci scalar, uh, well actually scalar curvature. Um, so um, this depends on scalar curvature, as you can see, um, S, actually I haven't yet written, S is written as S mu nu alpha beta equals R N N minus 1 H mu nu alpha beta where H mu nu alpha beta is g mu alpha g beta nu minus g mu beta g alpha nu not so it actually depends on r and also in linear comb uh, and on, on metric not not on derivative of metric but metric itself we know that Riemann tensor depends on on, deriv on and derivatives of metric and similar Ricci tensor will also depend on der derivative of metric so um, so three parts. First is because first uh, first one 
um, has a contribution from scalar curvature. Second one has a contribution from the Ricci tensor, which is defined here. And um, the third one is called the Wild tensor, which is traceless. <coughs> so um, um, I have to check whether it's traceless or not. Um, but this is basically a very. Uh, I, I'm just. I just wanted to give a very pedagogical introduction. Um, this is actually very difficult to understand. If, if uh, really what's really going on in here, it has a very rich history, which I really do not know much. Um, but um, this is a very esoteric um, part of general relativity, or actually differential geometry. Um, this is also called uh, irreducible. representation of Riemann tensor now this irre irre what is this irreducible representation vaguely in a hand waving way I can say when you reduce when you have um, when you have a group you can have a representation a matrix representation of that group and then this representation can be actually reduced to multiple representations expressed like this which cannot be further reduced each of these representation actually has some physical meaning and uh, this is more relevant in the case of quantum field theory and actually group theory treatment of quantum field theory and it's more of topic of group theory I'm not going to talk about this I don't know much about itself so I have to go back and check uh, how to really explain it well but right now for, for general relativity we don't have to really, really worry about it but each of these components actually have a physical meaning um, what actually they mean and um, I'll in, I will talk about these individually what they actually mean and then finally how Einstein constructed his equation based on the idea of this Ricci tensor scalar curvature and stuff like that metric and also on based on uh, the stress energy tensor so that is what is of more importance to us right now but in the following three classes I will talk about scalar curvature Ricci tensor and Weyl tensor and some of their properties